Okay. Um, welcome so much to this call. Um, my name's Law. I'm part of the Embercoom team. And this webinar is going to be introducing the Twin Trail program. For those of you who've not been to Embercoom before, um, we have 50 acres of rewilded land on the edge of Dartmoor. And we run a variety of programs that help people connect to each other, to themselves, to nature. And the Twin Trail is one of our newer programs. And we hope this webinar will give you all the information you need to decide if it's right for you. And we are very lucky to be joined by Mac McCartney, who's the founder at Embercoon, and Tuba Kehan, who's our programs lead. And both of them are lead facilitators on this program. And we've also got a couple of special guests who were on the Twin Trail program last year who are going to give some of their experiences of being on the program and share that with you. Um, so yeah, first of all, we will hear from Tuba and from Matt, and then I'll invite Becca and Justin to jump in with their experiences. And when that's done, there will be time for questions. If you'd like to ask them live on camera, you're very welcome. If you'd rather not turn your video on, um, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll read them out and get to those as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. So let's get started. Um, firstly, Mac, uh, hi. Can you introduce yourself, your background, your role at Embercoom and on this programme? Yeah. <clears throat> so hello, everyone. My name is Mac. I'm the uh, founder of Embercoom on the back of a very generous gift from a client of mine uh, way back in 97, um, eventually found the land, which is Embercoom, the 50 acre holding, and uh, we managed to purchase it. Um, <clears throat> since that time, I've been very involved in Embercoom really throughout the whole 25 years that we've been um, around our, our 25th anniversaries in uh, 1st of May. So uh, it's quite a milestone for us. And uh, it's been, like most things, really quite a journey. Um, I'm still, yes, I'm still very involved, but I'm not on the leadership team and I'm not a trustee, though I've been part of both. Uh, but I float somewhere in the middle and between. And, um, and for one reason or another, I think it really suits me. It works well. I'm still very involved in the uh, co-running uh, of the men, well, several of the programs, um, um, mostly with Tuba and um, others of our colleagues. And I still love that aspect of my work of actually um, being there with a group of people and leading that work or co-leading it. Um, in terms of background, <clears throat> I had. Um, I mean, uh, it's a rather long story, so I'll try and keep it very brief. But um, after a lifetime of multiple mistakes and occasional uh, successes, I, you know, and um, all kinds of different enterprises and experiences and adventures and mishaps, I began a 25 year, uh, 20 year training with a group of Native Americans. And that was definitely seminal uh, in my realization, I think, that I was uh, called by our Mother Earth to do everything I could within my power to stand uh, for her and all the generations of humans and more than humans now alive and yet to be born, uh, just to do what I can, which uh, truthfully, in the greater scheme of things, is tiny and yet still what I can give. So I'm still doing that, and I will do that until the day I drop. Um, I think the other thing is, of course, I too have changed and developed as I go along. But this notion of the twin trail <clears throat> is absolutely critical to me, because if I was didn't feel that I was truthfully walking on both trails twined together, then I, I don't think I would have earned my place here at Embercoom in the way that I perform it. But perhaps we'll speak about that in a little bit. Thank you, Mac. Um, and Tuba, can I ask you the same thing? Um, just introduce yourself and your background and 
what you do with this program and your relationship to it. Yes, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Tuba and I'm from Turkey. I was born and raised in Turkey and came to the UK about 15 years ago, uh, initially intending to stay here for one year. And I'm still here and staying strong. Um, and I'm so fortunate enough to call Embicum my home. Um, if I look back, I I realize that you know since my youth, I always wanted to be in service of others and something meaningful and bigger than myself. Initially, I kicked off my career as a teacher, and I was um, teaching people in Turkey, children, and then refugees and disadvantaged people in the UK. Then I transitioned into working into humanitarian sector, which I enjoyed really much. And I work for various um, charities here in the UK and abroad. I had, you know, it was joyful. And also I witnessed a lot of pain and agony at the same time. While my time in abroad, I heard about this place called Embicum. And when I went to Embukim to do the journey program, I had this profound realization that something very major was missing from my life, which was that natural, that connection with our natural world. It was in some ways very surprising for me because, you know, I grew up in this small, tiny village in Turkey, like surrounded by mountains and the trees and a beautiful river running. Um, but over time, I was I became very disconnected. So Embrikum gave me that opportunity to combine my passion to be in service of others and also my love for our earth. Um, so I'm at the moment, as I said, calling this place my home and I work here as the program's lead where I'm overseeing existing programs and also developing new programs like the Twin Trail. Um, I also, as Max said, um, co-lead some of our flagship programs, which really brings me to life. Um, I am a coach and a breathwork and, mind, um, breathwork and embodiment facilitator. I'm very excited to offer you a land of some of my work during this program so that will be quite an um, exciting journey for me. <laughs> Thanks Tuba. Um, so I think go back to Mac, you mentioned uh, the Twin Trail before, if you could tell us a bit more about that as a concept and a practice and why you think it's important to bring this work to life at this time. Yeah sure, thanks Noel. Um, it was in one of a uh, multiple of different um, interactions uh, that I received from my mentors during that period I alluded to uh, indigenous people. And uh, at one time, one of them <clears throat> referred to the twin trail. They, they basically were trying to make the point that in their view, many people on the spiritual path um, walk the inner path of their own personal development of uh, whether it's achieving enlightenment or whatever, however they choose to describe it, of trying to come into full alignment with life. But they sort of stop there. That was my mentor's view. That it's um, in many ways only to do with them and not that much to do with what is then shared and given out. So they came up with this line, they said to me, we would never trust anyone, certainly anyone of influence, who chooses not to walk the twin trail, the inner path of your own self-becoming, self-healing, self-development, self-potential, and the outer path of having powerful effect an impact in the world. And, you know, in my later <clears throat> thinking, it was clear to me that very often we are one or the other. There are certainly plenty of people who are very focused at having impact in the world. 
and there are many people also who are on a very strongly uh, strong spiritual path. I think there are rather less who are truly committed to the weaving of those things, two things together. There are still plenty of them, but I think they're less. And it's essential, I think. I th in, fact, in fact, in the view of my mentors and now and myself as well, and perhaps some of my colleagues, it's not truly a spiritual path if reciprocity isn't embedded and within all aspects of that path. In other words, the receiving and the giving. So the twin trail uh, presents us, I think, with quite a big challenge. And that challenge is that some of us maybe are far more interested in one of those trails than the others. And some of us are more successful in one of those trails than the other. And some of us give greater, attach greater importance to one trail or the other. But it's always saying no together. And the image I like to use for this is like the wand of caduceus uh, medical profession have, where you have these two snakes wound together in a double spiral around this wand. It's also very, very um, similar to the DNA symbol of the two of this double, double spiral as well. And what it says is you don't, as a general principle, you don't do one. And when you've achieved some kind of level of, of, of spiritual, um, uh, well, let, let's say enlightenment or some kind of spiritual sort of real realization, you don't wait till that moment and then get to work on your outer trail. You probably should say to yourself something more like, uh, this will take at least one lifetime and probably multiple others. And so, Actually, there's no point in waiting because I will never feel entirely ready. There'll always be some knowledge, some experience, circumstances in some way that I think are unhelpful to me bringing my gifts to the world. So I commit now to both paths, to both trails, and simultaneously seek to continuously and forever work on the weave of my own spiritual self and how I bring myself to the world, knowing that uh, it will many times be a challenging path. There will undoubtedly be also moments of joy and periods of joy and fulfillment. There'll be everything, in other words. It'll just be the whole thing. But I found it to be one of the most profound um, guidelines that I've adopted in my own life and it is fundamental in the work that we're doing here at Embercombe. In many ways on some of the other programs we allude to the twin trail but there's far too much to deal with um, as it were in many of the programs the journey and the hearth and others for us to spend that much time with it so it felt worthwhile to say let's take hold of this concept and develop a program itself, which is built around that concept. And also, rather than it being a five day program, let's extend it over a period of time in which we dip and weave and twist and turn and spiral around and try and find real traction with this concept. Uh, Tuba will speak, I'm sure, to the design of that in a, in a short moment. So that community of people that come on the Twin Trail are together over a period of months, not literally physically together over that whole period, but they, they move in and out, they come together. And in our experience of the first time that we ran the program, which was also the last time, which was just last year, um, incredible bonds are created between people and real traction was established on this notion of the twin trail. Like all Embercombe programs, I think it's quite an adventure. It has its raw edges. It has its truly joyful and wonderful aspects, but it is everything. So I suppose in one sense, it's not for the faint hearted, but neither is it for those who are um, already somehow um, 
fully equipped. It's for people like us who are partially equipped and up for the journey. Thank you. Thanks, Mac. That was really helpful. Um, Tuba, um, if you could sort of talk a bit about the content of the programme, that would be great. Yes, of course. I actually got a PowerPoint to share with you so that we got some images to share from last year's um, residentials. Um, let me just share my screen. I also want to mention that, you know, Mako, you already mentioned about the... Um, uh, let me just do this first. Oh. Okay, having a slight um, technical problem. Okay, there we are. Okay, here we are. Cool. Um, yes, the the length of the programs this year it is going to be six uh, six months, and you know those programs that we are running, which are a week long, five days, or a week long day got. In, they have profound impact on people and pe many people come out feeling transformed and other places as well when we do those week-long programs they just you know they can really give us that sense of what it, what it could be how our life could be how we could show up but when we can't we don't integrate those learnings to our day-to-day -day lives then they end up being just a really good amazing experience and memory that we share that's what we also wanted this program to be long and spread out to many months so that we can integrate as we go every single learning with the with the community that we have um during this during this process so integration is a very important part of the twin trail and so we will start our journey together on um online and then we're going to be going into inner trail and then we will transition into the outer trail. You can check out the dates on the website um, and then also come back to this recording to check it out. But So I'm not gonna um, go one by one, but I'm gonna take you to the first module first initially. And that is where we are really going into the inner trail. And we, what we will do is, you know, as we always do, we need to prepare for our journey, pack our bags and make the bookings and have a map. So we will be mapping the journey ahead. We will come together online as a group for the first time. And then there will be a time between the first and the second module for you to do some self-reflection and self-assessment to start that inner inquiry. And then there will be um, some structured way of um, inviting others to give you some feedback. And we will also assign you a coach where you will explore some of your findings and also perhaps setting your intentions for the rest of the journey. During this period, we will also make some invitations for you to be connected. And um, although the program is not, we won't be getting together regularly on, you know, on a weekly basis or, or such, we will be part of this thread. There will be an invisible thread between us. And we will offer you different things to strengthen, strengthen that thread, um, and you will be, you will be kept engaged throughout this process. And then the very exciting moment will come where we get together as a group for the first time in person in the heart of Dartmoor. It is a gorgeous place called the Brims Farm, and the River Dart is running, flowing, and sometimes in stillness, always witnessing us. And as we spend our days, we will always hear it roaring at the back of our ears. And it really helps us to feel connected to all the elements in that space. So in this, um, on this mo module, we will be seeking guidance, mainly from our natural world. And we will invite a few different um, external facilitators to help you to have the tools to really learn how to communicate with our nature. So there will be a deep nature immersion and connection and listening deeply, sensing and receiving the information and connecting with what is around us. There will be a solo walk um, and there will be times in silence and maybe perhaps even fasting 
um, this journey, we will come together as a village and there will be an opportunity for you to meet others. But ultimately, this is an inner journey. So we will be having moments to really go deeper in our processes. As part of this, we will also have a deep time walk where we will witness our Earth's um, journey and then perhaps we will we'll have different, you know, new eyes to view our connection to our earth and as we witness the billions of years is that has been going around also another thing that we're looking into is perhaps introducing you to dowsing again really like connecting with intuition and listening to the land very deeply i would like to show you some photos from the uh, last residential so this is our village um, hopefully when you come, the sun will be shining as well. But all weathers, we will be there smiling <laughs> and waiting with open arms to welcome you to your village for, for your home for the next seven days. And this is some of our team members who will be holding space and supporting your journey. And this is a lovely photo in the sun uh, of the previous cohort. But I wanted not to be biased because we did have some rainy days, but nevertheless, they were also very special. We, we sat by the fire and in fact, we will be sitting by the fire every day in our councils. We will hear from each other and connect with the fires. And some gorgeous places and spots on the Brims farm. And I also want to share a, a quote from one of the participants who said, a fabulous and deeply moving series of ceremonies enhanced by the rain and the wildness of it all. They provided great insight into the connections to others, the self and the mind, as well as the wild. When I think of them again now, I am moved, like I'm missing an old friend. So this was from Ian. So we all remember those beautiful days with so much um, gratitude and beauty. So from our inner trail, second module, we will then go into our mid-phase view. This is a place where we will start transitioning from that inner space to the outer trail. This will include a group check-in. And by that time, you will be already in family groups with a, in a small group of people that in your own terms, you will be meeting maybe on a weekly or bi-monthly bi basis, depending on what you agree. Again, we will offer you, extend you some invitations um, to weave the inner trail to outer and also prepare for the next residential, which will be our in our homeland, MBQ. So, outer trail. We are now really working on weaving the inner to outer. So we were in that solar journey in our own village, but in our solar journey and on the Dartmoor residential, now we are coming into a more collective effort and being part of a community. There will be, last time when we were together at MBQM on this residential, Max said, this is not a program, this is an initiation. I think by the end of the residential, people felt that initiation and it was very, very special. And on this journey, you know what, we talk about reciprocity and the, in the heart of reciprocity, at least for me, there is that, you know, the receiving and giving and it, the, our gifts really lie in the middle of it. So when we recognize that inner, explore that inner landscape, now we start to recognize what our gifts are because we know what our heart's desire is. And now we are looking into then what are our important responsibilities? What is it mine to give? We will really deep, uh, dive deep into this and you will be um, you know, challenged in some ways, hopefully in a good way, and you will find your voice and there will be space for you to use your voice and also receive feedback, give feedback and really um, strengthen your connection with, within the group, with your group. And we will, very important piece, which I was talking about earlier, the integration, the exploring, how this embeds into the daily life. So if those who haven't been to MBQM, this is our stone circle, very special place, and we will be holding a ceremony here when you are with us. 
and a few creations from the previous group, uh, not necessarily just from the last residential, but both of the residential. And there it worked. Um, I have to add, you know, some of the pieces about the second residential is going to be emergent because what the group will bring will, will be different. So we will play with that the different skills and expertise and interests, and then we're going to weave it into the program. So from the uh, MBQ residential, now then we will move on to the fourth module, which is our last one, and it will be online. Now we will be looking ahead, the onward journey. So we have already, we will have already done the harvesting our learnings from that journey. And here now you will connect again, what have I got? And there will be a process again as we started with self-reflection, self-assessment, and looking into the questions like, what now and what is next? And there will be again a session with your coach to support this learning and put it into practice as you map your onward journey. Um, Thank you. I'm going to leave it here and I'm sure there will be questions that we can expand uh, the content a bit more. Unless you have anything else to add, Mark. Um, <clears throat> not really, but <clears throat> you showed that beautiful photograph of the stone circle. And earlier this evening, I was just digging through some photographs because Laura had asked me, do I have some of MCUM in the very early days? And I just found this one. <laughs> so you saw that photograph of the stone circle. And there it is at the very beginning when the stones have been put in place and the turf has been laid down around them. But there's still just bare soil around. And, and I think for me, in some way, it's like... This, this is the magic of all of this work because we never planned a grove of oak trees around that circle. We built the circle. For five years, we did ceremonies of opening the eye of the dragon, the, this the wheel on Embergum's land. And after the first of those ceremonies, the first little oak tree suddenly popped itself up a few feet outside the stone circle. And now there's something like 200 young oaks growing outside and holding that stone circle in this extraordinary little sacred grove, all planted, not by us, uh, but by jays, the birds, in a most wonderfully random and uh, beautiful manner. And there's something about that, I think, for each of us are somehow stone circles which have been put in place. And there is all our own endeavor, but there's also just the magic and mystery of life weaving itself around us and our willingness somehow to cooperate, collaborate, join in. And then we stand back in some way and we witness what's being born. Thank you both. For that that's really really lovely to hear um i'm gonna quickly jump across now to justin um who i think is here somewhere um justin was on the program last year if you could just share a little bit of your experience and what it offered you and what you think anyone else interested in signing up should know uh yeah hi everybody good evening um um it was uh it was probably this time last year I made the commitment to join and uh, it was, I can honestly say, a life-changing uh, 12 months that has preceded uh, that. Um, I think for me, the Twin Trail is something uh, we all walk, but I've certainly walked it all my life. We all have that spiritual path, however conscious of it we are, but uh, often it's felt very um, separate. It felt like these been parallel tracks at times, schizophrenic tracks for me and this program bringing us closer to nature, bringing us closer to our own internal nature um, and the wonderful holding uh, that uh, Mac and Tuba and the Embercoom team uh, have done have enabled me to weave the inner and the outer together in a way that I couldn't have imagined. And uh, I am just emerging from that process, just emerging from the winter 
uh, with a uh, uh, with all sorts of uh, richness and uh, uh, as I've allowed some things to die back and die off and some new things to start to emerge. And as Mac just said, lots of that is still unknown and lots of the magic is still there, but but I can't recommend this program more highly or the team that that holds this space. It's been it's just been an extraordinary experience for me. So uh, um and uh, if if it's helpful to any of you thinking, in addition to speaking to the team, then you know I'd certainly be happy to uh, to also take any questions from you for as a as one of the participants, one of the the wonderful circle of fourteen that we were last year. So uh, um, I think that's all uh, I'd offer for now. But uh, it's uh, it's the most wonderful wonderful uh, journey if you decide to take that first step. Thanks, Justin. Um... And Becca, if I could ask you the same, just uh, a little bit about how you found the program, what you got from it, and why you recommend it. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so I wanted to focus on two really quite specific things that, for me, have come out of the program. It's really had a massively profound impact on my life. I've worked on environmental policy and projects for 25 years um, prior to joining the Twin Trails, and... I'd been very much focused on my outer, my outer trail, and I'd very much neglected my inner trail. And what has been amazing is this alignment of inner and outer that has come out of this process, which has just uh, really strengthened and shaped now everything that I'm doing in my work. So I used to have this kind of version of myself, which was Rebecca, that was always very professional and that was very separate from my inner world. And now I very proudly go in and be Becca with all her messiness and, you know, her imperfections, but also with a much more open heart. Um, and that really affects the way that I bring teams together, affects the way that I engage with organisations. And it's on a really practical level mean that I'm my work is shifting into a, a, a different area where I'm working on um, now I'm working on a farm in, um, and I've moved I've moved my life to Exeter um, and I'm engaging bringing people in contact with um, the land um, in a very creative way um, so it's been a very very practical impact on my life and the second thing is I really feel that I don't feel alone like anymore I feel that I have this wonderful world of nature that is resourcing me on a a really regular basis. And I also have this amazing community of other people that were on the Twin Trail. Like we are extremely close still. Um, we're meeting up in a couple of weeks time at Justin's house. Um, and um, our buddy groups that were set up during the Twin Trails, our family groups, you know, if I need to talk through something, I will can just call on them and we will set up a call and we'll discuss it through. It's like an ongoing support in my life. I feel so resourced. Um, and I just feel incredibly lucky, really, that um, I did this, um, this amazing programme and lucky to have everyone in my life. And that includes everyone that's on this call. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, Becca. That's really great to hear. Um, I'm just going to cover a little couple of practical bits and then we'll come to questions. Um, as I said, if you have questions and you don't want to be on camera, please feel free to pop them in the chat while I'm talking um, and then we can read them out. Otherwise, you're very well to, welcome to ask them live. Um, so firstly, um, there are three kinds of ticket for this program. Um, the first is a regular ticket, which is what most people will sign up with. We also have a supporter ticket, which if you can afford it, we really appreciate people paying that little bit extra. And it just helps us uh, provide more bursary places for those on a, um, a lower income. And lastly, we do offer the bursary tickets and those um, you can apply on the website. Um, if you go to the page of the um, event on the right hand side, there's a little link there where you can click um, to apply for a bursary place. Um, we've also got some uh, interest fee payment plans which are available. So if you want to secure your place with a deposit, you're very welcome to do that. And then you can apply for a payment plan and that splits the balance over the next seven months. So it makes it a little bit more affordable for those who've got um, lower cash flow <laughs> coming in. 
and yeah we're just trying to make it more accessible for everybody um so yeah i'm going to just pop the note the links to sign up and to the payment plan are now in the chat for you all uh does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask uh mac or tuba or becca yeah antonia yeah i can ask um Apologies. <laughs> Why am I apologising? I can't. I don't think I can do it this year, but I would love to do it. So what I want to know is, have you got dates for next year? Can I sign up for next year? Potentially. Tuba, I'm going to let you answer this one. <laughs> it's really here about that, Antonia. Nice to see you here. Yeah, yes, we, we've got it. Um, we already scheduled the dates for next year. We will release them when we release all the dates for 2025. Okay. Yeah, love to see you there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tubi, is it possible that you can send those dates to Antonia? Yeah, sneak peek would be good because I've got a lot, I've got <laughs> yeah. a lot of kind of commitments. But um... yeah, they're, I'm about to get them all confirmed. Once they're confirmed, then why don't you pop us an email at support yeah. okay, at well Antonia? Then. then we'll definitely get back to you as soon as they're confirmed. They're, they're dropping like flies, Inga and Judith also, <laughs> going for 25. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? Well, I was wondering about the, um, if I can, the interplay between um, some of the other programmes, because I've was been sort of drawn into the journey. I've been I've not done it, but interested in it. That's sort of what sort of got me here. Um, <clears throat> and I wonder, you know, is the journey... Can you would it be a necessity to do it or you know could you do both or what would be you know and obviously and I, I know you purposely don't reveal a lot about the journey um so yeah just where that sits and the hearth as well but you know for me it's more the journey where that sits with uh, the twin trail um and, yeah and how they interplay together becca you've done the journey as well yep the so i did part. I did last year the journey followed by the twin trail and I found that combination a really fantastic combination because the journey was about going deeper internally and then um, the twin trail sort of took that a step further and then also brought the outer so I found I found that combination extremely powerful for me and I would definitely recommend it if you can. So just um <clears throat> just to mention, Martin, <clears throat> uh, Justin, who was with us just a short while ago, uh, did the Twin Trail first. Uh, he'd never, I don't think he'd done a, uh, another program. And uh, later this year, he's coming on the journey. Um, so I think you can do it either way. And I, I probably shouldn't say any more than that because <laughs> <Yes>. I <I'm> get <laughs> slapped. Afterwards, by Tuba. So, Tuba, have you got anything you'd like to say? Yes, I do actually. And <laughs> thanks for the question. <laughs> um, so, we designed the program uh, in a way so that anyone can do it. So, it is open to anyone, so that it is not just for people who've done the journey or the heart necessarily beforehand. So, you will be, it, there is no disadvantage of doing it the first and in fact sometimes like in Justin's case it really spoke to him to do the twin trail first and then coming to the journey after but then obviously in Becca's case the journey was um like an important step before the twin trail so I think it is quite a personal experience in that sense but you, you know but there's no disadvantage maybe there will be some terminology you may need to say oh what what does that mean if we ever miss that um but otherwise I, I think it will be um, either way, really. Also, you know, on the Twin Trail page, I trust that we have a little video about this topic because we get that often. So if you go to the page and it says only like five, 10 minutes long with a conversation with Mac, that might be also helpful. Okay, we're gonna have to wrap it up in a minute. But has anyone got any last minute burning questions before we do that? No, that's great. And um, we're going to finish on time. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, special thanks to Becca for joining us and giving your time to come and share your experience. And thank you to Mac and Tuba. 
And yes, I hope to have see a lot of you on the Twin Trail this year or 2025, evidently. Um, the links are in the chat and we'll be sending out a link to this recording as well. So if you want to rewatch it and because you missed something uh, that Max said and you want to re-listen, um, you'd be most welcome to do that. If you've got any questions, please do get in touch with us. Uh, our email is support at mbookum.org. And Tuba and I monitor that inbox quite closely. So we'll mm. get back to you as quickly as we can and answer your questions. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.